Hey YouTube, I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on how to set up your uh, BIOS to be a little bit more optimal for gaming. I apologize, this is a little off script and uh, there will be no video editing obviously since I'm recording it from my phone but I just wanted to do a quick showcase in the BIOS on some of the things that are pretty prominent especially if you have like an Asus motherboard so uh, first and foremost you want to go into your advanced mode hit F7 or you can click it if you have a mouse that's compatible with your BIOS and then the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your AI tweaker profile now this is obviously varied based off of what kind of motherboard manufacturer you have in my case I have Asus uh, depending on your manufacturer this layout may be different from other layouts uh, this is strictly just for Asus motherboards because Asus gets a bad reputation for being bad motherboards and that has to do with the fact that when you uh, have an Asus motherboard for the most part they come with this Asus multi-core enhancement and what happens is this is normally enabled remove all limits well the downside to that having that enabled is what it will do is it will run everything at absurd amounts like just unlimited amounts where like if you have an Intel chip or a Ryzen chip usually what you can do is you'll have one of these on like en enabled or auto uh, either one is completely fine you generally want what your chip is compatible with and what it wants to predetermine when you play games because Asus for some reason decides that you know what let's just remove all the safe power limits so if you scroll down in here you can actually go down to your uh, uh, internal CPU power management and what will happen is if you have the uh, say the Asus standard setting set up what you'll see here is you'll see your current CPU core cache limit uh, 360 amps well I, I set that specifically myself I set these numbers myself 184 watts and then your short duration package 224 watts what the Asus default does is it sets it up to 4095 so for anyone who knows what that is that means it's uncapped unlimited so your CPU will be just running at ungodly amounts of speed or wattage and it can overheat it can get hot there's a lot of complications with that so you want to disable that just specifically because you don't want that wattage now if you turn on like back in that main menu I'll go back here real quickly if you or no actually uh, if you turn off the Intel uh, or if you turn on the Intel management then what it will do is it will set it to the chips defaults so I think uh, for my i9 uh, 2900k chip the defaults is something 253 on the short duration and then on short or on the uh, long duration I think it's like 154 and then the amps are 360 now ideally what will happen is it will automatically do this when you reset BIOS it might not always do that that's why I had to set it manually myself I went and looked up the manufacturer information on my chip and I entered it myself this is very important though for people who are trying to make sure everything is running optimally uh, small other tips that I can give out to just anyone who's building a computer or setting things up in BIOS not sure why it's not let me go back let's see here let's click that okay so up here for a lot of the times Asus boards will have XMP off so for those who don't know what XMP is XMP is effectively it's a, a dual threading for your memory uh, the XMP profiles are for gaming enthusiasts uh, XMP1 is kind of like it's a slight overclock of your memory it makes things run very fluently doesn't overheat anything it's generally what I would recommend where XMP2 is more for like the hyper performance super enthusiasts who want to have just a crazy amount of power which you know if you're running DDR5 might you, you should have sufficient cooling before you do something like that now for like XMP uh, your profile obviously it will just auto default for me it was DDR320 uh, uh, sometimes what will happen though is like the DRAM frequency sometimes it will go to auto and auto doesn't always give you the max DRAM frequency so I had to come in and manually set what my uh, RAM was set to which was 300 uh, megahertz and now when you have XMP obviously it will split it and everything will run just fine um, one last thing that I can suggest with optimization say if you're running with thermal throttling or heat issues with your computer you can technically go into let's see here it's right down here so you've got your black aware adaptive voltage 
uh, you can actually have it offset your voltage. So what this means is like when your computer is pulling amps or powers or volts to your uh, cores on your CPU, uh, sometimes you'll notice your temperatures will spike and it can cause actual stuttering in games if it's spiking to, uh, I would say from like zeros to highs. And this is not something that everyone needs to do. It's something that I do specifically just because I like to have a little bit more stability when my cores are heating up and uh, destabilizing. Uh, and so you can, what you can do is you, it's normally disabled, but I hit enable and you want to make sure you go into offset mode and then you do a negative. So what negative does is so it offsets. So like say if this voltage ramps up to like uh, 1.4. Uh, this 0 0.05 is going to make that 1.4, it's going to bring it down to like 1.35. So it's effectively just bringing down the voltage ramping by an incremental amount. I would not go anything over this 0.5. Uh, you could potentially lose stability or it might even crash your windows uh, or what kind of operating system you have. I would recommend anywhere 0 0.5 or 0 0.25. And... Uh, on top of that, one final thing to add on to that is if you really wanted to get into like the nitty gritty of optimizing your games, or if you're just having like crazy performance issues, or your computer's getting hot because a lot of these new chips are running hot, you can hit sync all cores. Now, I wouldn't recommend this specifically because this is going to keep them all at pace with each other, but I have tested it and I have played with games like this, and it does work well and it does keep the cores generally cool. Uh, and then what you would do is you would set a, a, an amount. So like my chip, you could do f anywhere from three, 38 to uh, 48. Uh, the, the higher you go, the hotter it's going to get. It's like 4.8 gigahertz. It's going to get really hot. I generally wouldn't do that unless you really, really need to. Uh, and it's something I would uh, strongly suggest looking a little bit more into. I can't explain it too well. But for the most part, you can leave these things auto and you're going to be completely fine. Most of these settings you're going to leave completely auto. Make sure you have XMP on. You can turn the Intel on or whatever Ryzen has or whatever chip you're using. I just decide to turn it off because I like to go inside my computer and actually uh, disable things from, uh, I think it's a Intel Extreme Tuner. But for the most part, these are what you're going to want when you have an Asus motherboard. Anyway, thanks for listening.